We are in the midst of eclipse season. Our moon is waning. How are you doing? This is a very potent time of the year when we have eclipses. We're leading up to our next new moon, which will be in the Vedic sign of Pisces. Anytime we have a new moon in Pisces, this is the time when we mark the start of the upcoming year. So we run a chart for this time at the time of the new moon, and this shows us the trajectory for this upcoming year. Well, it's only about every 18 years or so that we have a new year chart that lands on an eclipse. And anytime we have these types of charts, it usually marks a year of transformation. So this year won't be any different. It won't be excluded. It's going to be a powerful time. Now there are plenty of insights that you can find through history to see how we've had big upheavals uh, during this time and anytime we have these eclipses. For example, in 1912, this is when the Titanic sank and it was a similar placement. We've also had some market crashes, like in 1986, we had a big one. And in 2005, when this came around, that's when Hurricane Katrina hit. So I'm not saying this to get you into a place of fear. I'm saying that these times tend to mark really powerful opportunities for changes in humanity and in the evolution of the species. So what does this mean for you? Well, for you, when we have our eclipses in the Vedic signs of Pisces and Virgo, it gives this juxtaposition, this polarity between spirituality and practicality. And it gives you an opportunity to balance these energies within your life. So maybe you kind of err more on the spiritual side and you love to spend time meditating and working with any sort of spiritual techniques. Well, this is wonderful. However, in order for you to live on this earth, because we are humans, right? And we are really moving forward on the or in the 3D realm on the earth. It's important that you make things somewhat practical. So you can have an amazing spiritual practice, but if it doesn't really support you on the earth, then it's not a supportive practice to continue. So over these next weeks and months, you may find opportunities to blend things and to balance them out. Because on the flip side of that, if you're constantly considering all the practical needs that you have, you know, the, the money and the success and also taking care of things in your life, if you are overly focused on those things, life becomes very stressful. So I want to give you an understanding that right now you are at a precipice in your life where you get to decide how to move forward. And the best advice for this placement in time is one that balances your practical needs with your spiritual needs. You're here to evolve. That's why you're here. You show up on this earth for you to evolve. And in order for you to evolve, it's important to work with practices that help you reprogram those habituations, those habitual patterns that keep you stuck in the same life, well, this is your opportunity to clear them out. And then with those habitual patterns, it's also important to keep your energy very elevated, to tap into the cosmos and the reality that <laughs> this is not just the earthly plane. We are connected to something so vast and so big that it's important to remember it so we don't get overly concerned with the earthly realm. So on April 8th, when we have this big solar eclipse, the sun and the moon will be with the Vedic uh, karma planet called Rahu. Now, Rahu is basically an energy that consumes and becomes obsessive. So it eats and eats and eats. Well, on April 8th, Rahu will consume the sun. And with that, it brings a lot of opportunity for transformation. These three energies will be in the Vedic sign of Pisces. Now, Pisces is all about 
expansion, spirituality, the unconscious, the realm of imagination. It's a really powerful placement that has to also be tied back to the earth. Because if the Pisces energy goes too far, nothing ever happens. So during this solar eclipse, it's important that you connect to the cosmos, the expansion of the cosmos. But at the same time, connect to this earth that we're on. This marks the beginning of a very powerful transition. Mercury is currently retrograde. And during the time of this eclipse, he'll be in what's called the Gandanta between the signs of Aries and Pisces. And this Gandanta is like a karmic knot. It's the energy of intensity because it's the space of time between the fire and the water. So the fire of Aries and the water of Pisces. And when fire and water come together, they create steam. And so Mercury, our planet of communication, of travel, of business, is in this steamy place, all intermixed with this eclipse. This means that powerful insights may come through for you, either in the realm of communication or maybe even in business ideas. But the caution here is that it's important you don't make big decisions during this time, you might get the insight. And you do that by meditating, and by tapping into the spirituality of Pisces. But in reality, it's best for you to use this time for observation, to just consider different ways of being in your life, different ways of communicating, different ways of listening deeply. Because it's a tumultuous time. It's not a time to take big risks. It's simply a time for you to look around, to assess the inner workings of yourself, your emotions and your actions, your behaviors in this life. So let's see what the tarot cards have to say about this upcoming eclipse. Okay, well, the first card that came up is the Knight of Cups. So this shows that there will be some form of emotional fulfillment, maybe even a feeling like a knight in shining armor is going to come through and take care of everything for you. But the thing with the Knight of Cups is that it is a relatively temporary energy. This means that the knight in shining armor that shows up is just a brief and temporary experience. Because the second card that came up is the Six of Swords. And this shows a woman and a young child on a boat leaving. And they're leaving a bad situation. They're leaving a tumultuous situation. So if you blend this with the Knight of Cups, it means that, yeah, something may be presented to you that won't actually be very supportive. And so you have to leave it. You have to move away from it. And sometimes that can bring a little bit of intensity and a little bit of sadness. But realize that it's important because if you don't move away, the third card that showed up for us is the Eight of Swords. And this depicts a woman who is trapped, but she's trapped within her own thoughts. All she has to do is step outside of those swords and she will be free. So the advice of these three cards in reference to the eclipse season and the solar eclipse is to acknowledge that sometimes powerful opportunities will show up. And for you, you have to weigh out what's right for you. Just because it is presented to you, it doesn't mean that you have to indulge or take it. Because the three cards here imply that, yeah, there was something that was once emotionally fulfilling for you, and it may even be presented in these next weeks. But use that dynamic of balance, the spiritual and the practical right? Is it practical for you? Is it time for you to move away? 
What happens if you don't move away? Will you feel somewhat trapped in your own choices, a victim to your own decisions? Well, realize that there are so many opportunities out there. So many opportunities out there for you to create fulfillment and success in your life. And it's okay for you to step away and to move forward into new ground. This is no longer a time for you to be bound by your own decisions, to be victimized by your past. It's time for you to break free. Step outside of your own bounds. Open your mind to new horizons, even when it feels scary. Let go of the past. Clear out the old patterns and become your own knight in shining armor. Eclipse time is the perfect time for you to meditate. So check out my yoga classes and meditations and let me know how it's going in the comments.